The harvests of any bay depend on the waters that flow into it. We literally watched, uh, you know, the rockfish disappear in the river here. We watched the hardheads, uh, which used to be abundant every year, just completely leave. The real concern came when we noticed that the commercial fishermen were slowly dwindling. The main reasons I went in public life was because I love this river. I love everything about it. I love the Chesapeake Bay. It's such a great natural resource. And uh, to see uh, a waste or a demise of something that's so precious and so dear to you uh, really is alarming. In the upper reaches of the Patuxent River, a population boom during the 1960s and 70s, new homes and highways, new cities and suburbs. New sewage treatment plants were soon overloaded. At low flow, nearly half the water flow in the upper Patuxent was poorly treated sewage. A number of scientists had been outlining a connection between the loadings of sewage in the upper river and the losses of aquatic life in the lower river. I, I'm, I'm not a sociologist or a psychiatrist or anything else like that, but, but I have this basic feeling that, that healthy environments um, tend to support healthy people. You know, um, I, I think it's something that, that we need. We collected this core from water that was about 25 feet deep, and there was a good deal of oxygen in the bottom waters there. As a reflection of that well-oxygenated water, the, the top part of this uh, sediment for several inches is a, is a brown color, and that's indicative of, of a sediment that's been in contact with oxygen very recently. But the more important thing about this core is that uh, there are all these small holes all over the surface of that core, and, and those are basically burrows of small animals called amphipods. And, a minute ago, I just counted how many burrows there are in this little tiny piece of the bay bottom. There's about 150 burrows, just, just in this little tiny area. Uh, they're an important uh, food item for uh, the bottom uh, feeding fish like spot and croaker, and of course, they're, they're an important item for things like crab. But in the deeper sections of the bay that, that typically become very hypoxic or anoxic, um, these are the kind of cores that, that we would typically see. And, and you can see these, these are real different, and they're going to become more different as the season goes on. The big difference here is that, as you see from right near the surface all the way down here, these sediments are very, very black. Um, and that's indicative of sediment that's been removed from any source of oxygen for a long time. Even at this point, there's an absence of, of animal holes. Uh, there's no oxygen there. So without oxygen, there aren't going to be any higher forms of life. Um, there won't be any uh, healthy uh, clam, worm communities, amphipods, and that sort of thing. The type, the type of organisms that are an excellent uh, food source for uh, fish, um, crabs and that sort of thing. Scientists have long considered low oxygen levels a key indicator of ecosystem stress. They found that sewage in the river acts like fertilizer. It feeds and overfeeds the phytoplankton. All those floating microscopic plants that turn the river and the bay green each summer. All this new sewage in the river was causing an explosion in phytoplankton populations. Early blooms in spring, then massive blooms in summer. During these blooms, phytoplankton die, falling in multitudes to the river floor. On the bottom, all these dead phytoplankton become food for bacteria, and these bacteria use up most of the oxygen in the water and sediments. Here in the Patuxent is the oxygen loss during a typical year. As phytoplankton bloom and die in the spring, oxygen declines rapidly. Along the river deeps, huge zones of dead water and sediments, empty of oxygen. The research link was becoming clear. Too much sewage robs the water of oxygen. The Patuxent was not the only river in trouble. 
the Chesapeake was an ecosystem under stress.